Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we are going to be doing a review and wear test of a brand new makeup item from The Ordinary, which is their concealer. I know a lot of you guys have been very curious about this. I literally had it written down in my planner for you so that I could purchase it immediately and review it as soon as possible. So I actually have four different concealer shades here that I will be swatching. I'll show you guys what those look like. And then of course, we'll talk through formulation, application, ingredients, and then do the wear test so you can see how this wears on my skin throughout the day. But that's not all. I've done a review and wear test of the Ordinary Serum Foundation already. I did that this summer, I believe. I'll link that below if you haven't seen that yet. But in that video and just ever since I posted that, I've seen a lot of requests from you guys to talk about their coverage foundation and how it compares to the serum foundation. So I thought just, of course I have to be wearing a foundation anyway in this wear test. We may as well throw these in. So I'll be wearing coverage on one side of my face, serum on the other, so that hopefully by the end of the video, you can figure out which of these two foundations is going to be the best fit for you. And then of course, see if you wanna purchase their concealer or totally pass on it. So if you wanna see all of that, you're in the right spot. We're gonna jump right into it. Before we do, if you like makeup, skincare, and hair care content, don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss out on my next video and follow me on Instagram and TikTok. My username is Abby Young and I have it right here for you. All right, let's jump into it. All right, let's talk details for this concealer really quickly. So this is literally called concealer. <laughs> That's it. It retails for $5.80 and has 0.3 fluid ounces of product in it. Very teeny, tiny little bottle. Not really what I was expecting when that came in the mail. I was like, oh, like look at how tiny this is. But $5.80 of course is very affordable and if it performs how they say that it does, then you in theory wouldn't need that much product, which would make it even more affordable. So what they say is that this is a high spreadability pigment suspension system with very high coverage, but it's supposed to have a real skin finish, look natural on the skin and resist collecting and fine lines. That right there is basically my perfect description for a concealer. They just described my concealer dream because I have talked about this before. I have prominent under eye circles and veins and just discoloration. So I need a full coverage concealer, but I also need something that's not going to settle into fine lines. And as I have gotten older over the past couple of years and I don't have 18 year old skin anymore, I, not that I was 18 two years ago, by the way, if you're wondering if that's what I meant. No, I just have noticed that certain concealers that used to work really well for me are starting to settle into lines a little bit more than they used to. So something like this sounds like a dream. We will see if that's the case. And then as far as shades here, they have 36 different shades available, which is really great for a concealer shade range. So they say they have four different categories, lighter tones, medium tones, dark to deep tones, and deeper tones. And then within each of those categories, they have them broken out by undertone. So they have cool, which is made up of pink and red undertones, neutral, and then warm, which is made up of yellow undertones. The thing that I did not realize about these shades that I really wish I did before I ordered the four that I have is that they have a little note here about these shades just tucked in right before the directions to the point where people have stopped reading. <laughs> Maybe that's just me, but I'm never reading a full product description like this before I buy something. I really wish that they had this note actually by the swatches so that people realized. It says, no, the ordinary concealer has been formulated to be slightly lighter in comparison to our offerings within our serum slash coverage foundations. Even at first when I read that, I was like, do they mean lighter weight? And then I was like, actually, I think they probably mean the color, the shade. That's fine it's not really fine because they're so, so much lighter. So thankfully I ordered the darker one that I did. I almost didn't order it because it's actually the same shade as the foundation that I have. You will see how different they are. It's not just a little lighter, it's a slightly lighter. No, it's a very big difference. And all of the shades that I ordered that are lighter than that are so, so light. Okay, so here we have 1.0 neutral, 1.1 neutral, 1.2 neutral, and 2.0 neutral. So this is 2.0 neutral on the foundation. This is 2.0 neutral on the concealer. I actually haven't swatched these yet until this video and I didn't realize how different those are in undertone. So I'll show you again. This is so much peachier than this, which has just, I would say more of a traditional warm undertone, even though it says it's neutral. Look at the difference, nothing alike. And then these are so, so much lighter than this. So I can't really say I'm surprised because I talked about this in my serum foundation review that their colors are definitely off or their shades. 
and I have a slightly warm undertone and this is supposed to be neutral and I find that it pulls very yellow. So they're shades that actually say that they're yellow or warm and undertone are incredibly, incredibly yellow. So just be aware of that, that the concealer shades, at least here for 2.0 neutral are not identical. Not only are they lighter, but they also here don't have the same undertone at all. So just be aware of that. If you're going to try to use your foundation as a guide, I wouldn't really do that. I appreciate that they have a little note, but I feel like they should be more specific about that and have that listed right up by the shade so that people know because, wow. So of course you guys just got a little sneak peek of the actual formulation aside from just looking at the shades and you probably were able to see right away how much pigment that concealer has. It is very full coverage. So when they say very high coverage, they are not kidding. It's very high coverage. And that made me super nervous at first because it definitely has a thick creamy formulation on top of being high coverage. It's just, it's the type of thing that always settles into lines for me and it's just a mess. So I was nervous, I was stressed about it, but of course we're gonna go ahead and apply it here and go through with the wear test. So I've applied this with both a brush and a sponge and also my finger and I personally find that it applies most flawlessly with a damp beauty sponge. So the one that I have here is from Real Techniques. I'll link it below as well as the brush, which is also actually from Real Techniques. That sponge is amazing. I've never found a need to use Real Beauty Blender because it's so affordable, but works so well. That has a way of making this concealer look so flawless. It just, I feel like it really sucks up the right amount of product so that you don't have too much sitting on the eye area to where it could eventually settle into lines. So it doesn't look cakey. It's, it's perfect. So if you don't have a damp beauty sponge, but you want to use this concealer, I would definitely recommend purchasing one or thinking about purchasing one because I think that the application is so pretty. It's that full coverage, fully covers up under eye circles and veins and discoloration for me. It's perfect and exactly what I look for in a concealer. It applies fine with a brush, but just because it's so creamy, I find that it's just easier for me to use a sponge. So sometimes I'll actually just apply a little bit at first with either my finger or a brush, and then I'll go in with the sponge after to absorb any excess product that I feel like needs to be picked up because your fingers and a brush just aren't going to do that. They just slide the product around if that makes sense. So any application method works, but I personally prefer the sponge. Okay, so before we jump into the foundation application and then wear test of all of these products, I want to touch on the ingredients really quickly because I always like to do that for my makeup reviews, but here it's really going to be quick because there's nothing for me to talk about, which is good in this case. All of these products, both concealer and foundations, are fragrance-free, essential oil-free, irritant-free, Basically anything that could potentially be concerning if you have sensitive acne prone skin, free from anything like that, which is awesome. Are there amazing skincare ingredients in these products? No, there's literally nothing for me to highlight, but I personally don't have an issue with that in makeup because I have amazing ingredients in the skincare products that I'm wearing underneath my makeup. So that gets my stamp of approval there, but wanted to address that. Okay, so I really don't want to read through the product descriptions here for the foundations and do the whole nine yards because I know I have a whole review on the serum foundation already. So I thought I should at least address the major differences between the two, and honestly, it's just coverage. So I will say that both of these have the same color range. They both have 21 shades available, which is not acceptable. In the deep to deepest range, there's just not nearly enough availability for what a brand should have in 2021. So The Ordinary, we need more shades in these foundations. I actually find it really weird that they have 36 concealer shades, but only 21 foundation shades. That seems backwards to me completely. So please come out with more shades get with the program. Both of these foundations when it comes to pigmentation are actually supposed to be the same. So they say they have a rich, highly saturated effect, very pigmented, and that they actually are both supposed to have the same finish as well, which is semi-matte, my personal favorite finish. So when it comes down to it, the two differences between these products are number one, the amount of coverage. So the serum foundation is supposed to have medium slash moderate coverage. The coverage foundation is supposed to have, you guessed it, high slash full coverage. And then the actual consistency of the product is supposed to be slightly different as well. They both claim to be lightweight, but the coverage foundation says that it's a non-oily cream. Serum is supposed to be a lightweight serum. 
Also, the shade that I have in these foundations, I know it's too dark for me before you come for me, is 2.0 Neutral, but I already had the serum foundation in 2.0 Neutral, so I didn't want to have to buy several new shades, so I just bought 2.0 Neutral in the coverage foundation and worked it down my neck. We're not going to worry about it. So I'm going to show you guys here on the back of my hand. I'm sure you can guess which one is the serum foundation. <laughs> it's this one right here. So serum and then coverage right here. So while of course we could see a difference right away in how liquidy that serum foundation was compared to the coverage foundation, I find that once they are blended out, they achieve a very, very similar effect, not only on the back of my hand, but on my face as well. So I would say that I kind of felt that same thing when I was first applying the coverage foundation, that it felt ever so slightly creamier and just not as liquidy as the serum foundation but it also still felt very lightweight and felt very nice on the skin. So that's the thing about the serum foundation that I've always loved so much is the fact that it has such great coverage, but it's so, so lightweight. The coverage foundation is still lightweight. It's just a tiny bit creamier, like they said, and does have a little bit more coverage, but is there that much of a difference in the coverage at the end of the day? I personally don't think so. I think they both have good coverage. I think the serum foundation is definitely something you could build to be full coverage. <laughs> I just think I was expecting this to have really like intensely full coverage, way more than this. And I think they look very, very similar, if not honestly identical, once I have all of my makeup on and once everything is blended in. So maybe you guys will feel differently in looking at the clips. Maybe I will too when I'm editing this video, but I felt like when I was looking at my skin in the mirror, I just didn't really see much of a difference. Okay, now let's wrap up with the wear test and my final thoughts on these products, starting off with the concealer. So I have to say that this concealer really exceeded my expectations. It holds up so well throughout the day for hours and hours of wear. Just because of that formulation, I was like, this is not going to work for me, but somehow it does and it works really well. It does settle a tiny bit into lines, so it's not like it's going to jump and skip over your lines, which let's be honest, no product is going to do that, but it doesn't emphasize fine lines in my personal opinion, which is what I look for. So I was very pleasantly surprised by this concealer. It's actually one of the best concealers that I feel like I've tried in a while. If you prefer a formulation that's really liquidy, then this is just not going to be for you because it doesn't have that, but I think that it's something that you can sheer out to where it still feels lightweight on the eye. So if you can get past that initial feel, I think you may really end up enjoying it if you're on the hunt for something that's full coverage because it's just, it's not heavy, it's not gross, it's not what you would think from a full coverage concealer. So I would recommend it. I think the price point's great. You have a lot of different colors to choose from, just make sure you're not going too light with your shades. And then for the foundations, honestly, the only thing that I noticed between the two at the end of my wear test was the fact that the oils on the side of my face where I wore the serum foundation just were peeking through a little bit more. Keep in mind that when I film in front of these bright beauty lights and just any lights in general, they really emphasize the shine on my face and make me look even greasier than I really do in person. So it's looking a lot more oily on camera than I really was in person without the lights on. So if you're freaking out because you're super oily, don't be worried about that. I actually think both of these do a really good job at allowing my oils to come through in a natural way without looking greasy. Again, it's just like, a little startling in that clip. So I think that my oils do peek through a little bit more on the serum side. So if you're incredibly oily, then you may prefer the coverage foundation. But aside from that, I feel like there's, it's just a wash between the two, but I really love both of them. So I say go for either. I think I still gravitate towards the serum foundation just because I love that liquidy formulation. It's something that I don't have in any other foundation. That liquidy, really lightweight feel that feels almost like a serum, honestly, with that amount of coverage is just something that is so, so hard to come by. So I still think that the serum foundation is my favorite, but I really love the coverage foundation as well. And if you want a little bit more coverage and you're okay with a little bit of a creamier feel that still is lightweight, then go for this one. But I think both are great products. Do I think that they need to have both of those foundations? I don't really get it, but it's their brand, not mine. <laughs> so that's it for this video. I really hope that you guys found this helpful and like the little foundation wear test side by side that I threw into. 
Hopefully that didn't feel too disjointed, but I know a lot of you have been asking about that foundation. So I thought, let's just do it all in one. So I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Are you going to try this concealer? Are you going to try either of these foundations? Do you already have any of these? What are your thoughts? What's your skin type? Let's just all chat about these products in the comments below. And if you did enjoy this video and found it helpful, please don't forget to give my video a thumbs up, subscribe, click on that notification bell and send my channel to a friend. All of those things really help to make sure that my videos are recommended to others in the YouTube algorithm, which is just a nightmare to try to manage. So thank you so much for your support. I seriously appreciate it. My next video will be up in a few days, so stay tuned for that. But until then, I hope you have a great few days.